37 here. So we started while you were in high school? Yes. And how, Middle school. How'd that happen? I don't know. What happened was uh, I met a girl that was in a fire here on Minor Street and six of her siblings died. And when I met her in the hospital right after that is when I met Joe. Then he owned the sandwich shop. I worked for him for the sandwich shop the first year. Then he closed it and I worked here ever since. Joe got out of war and he came and his mom lived in the front here. So what happened was they, well, really it was ATV Bakery. So now in 1945, he purchased the bakery here and this is where he'd been planted ever since. The name he had, Redding Hard and Soft Pretzel Bakery, because the first year he was in business, he made the hard pretzel. He continued that for one year. After the one year, the soft pretzel went over so big, he discontinued the hard pretzels. He took in neighborhood kids, you know what I mean? He did for everybody, but never had a family of his own. It's like he took them all in as families, so nobody ever went hungry. If they came in, they didn't have a dime in their pocket, he just, fed him, took care of him, and sheltered him as his own. The owner uh, fell on, on terrible health issues. As the city was declining, so was his business. So he just got tired of it, you know. He, he enjoyed it, don't get me wrong. He just, he was walking with the cane, and it was getting harder and harder and harder. So just one day is when he said, that's it, and he didn't feel like coming over anymore. So that's basically where it ended up. Joe asked me if uh, I would continue to stay and if I wanted to, would I run it for him? And I said, absolutely, yes. So I've been here. I've basically been running it for the last 15 years. Oh, it devastated me, you know, it really did. He's like a second father. Just glad I had the opportunity to meet him and be where I am today. I don't think the total effect even hit me yet. So it did hit me, but I don't know. There was so many people within the past three years. It started with my partner and then it just went on and on and on and on and on. I swear I went into like a little state of depression because I lost like nine, 10 people within a three year period of time. Really it's a three man operation, but Johnny passed away August to be three years ago, so I've been doing it myself. And then Joe gave it up like 10 years ago, so I've been running it for him. So pretty much it's just me now. First thing I do is come in and prep the oven. I throw coal on the fire. After that, I have to wait until the heat reaches its temperature, get my first cup of coffee. After the first cup of coffee, then what I do is I make sure the mixer's ready to go. I get the yeast in, prep everything else, and then what I do is now that the fire's up to 400, what I do is I vacuum, I towel it, and then I'm ready to go. So five o'clock is when I start. And that's when I uh, 
start twisting while I'll mix. Throw it in the twisting machine, twist them all by hand. All depends on the orders that I have coming in in the morning. I then get them ready. Brick oven, hearth, I mean, can bake 50 dozen at one time. Heat it with coal, which nothing has changed. 1945 and everything's still the original way. That's what's unique about that pretzel bakery. Every day, quarter of six, the pretzels are coming out the oven ready for sale. Maybe once in 37 years, I have really missed a day. There is no sick days to me. There's no excuse. You're here, you do what you gotta do, and then you get out. The Pretzel Bakery being such a classic real ratting institution around here, I published a story about this um, particular plight she had going on there. She was going to go out of business at the end of the year if she, uh, when her flour ran out. To run the oven with coal is $800 a month, and then with your expensive flour, that's another $1,000. It's $1,800 a month just for your flour and your coal. I was so tired of taking out of my own pocket to pay for the merchandise itself. It's more expensive than people think. community really jumped up. They were supportive. They, they walked through the door. I mean, for the whole day, the article hit the paper. I did nothing but cry that one Friday because I couldn't believe the warmth in everybody's heart to want to actually be supportive in what I do and what I love. Overall, it's a great quality pretzel. And um, I've been coming here for years. And um, at one point in time, I lost track and stopped coming. But I started coming back. I said, I can't beat this. She's gotten some exposure, which has helped her, but she definitely has to develop a plan to keep her business and her name in front of the minds of people, uh, or it's going to it's going to fall apart. And I hope, for um, Shelley's sake, she she hangs on to the bump up in clients that she got after the first story. But I'm not so convinced because it's uh, another reason that the area of the city she's in in South Reading. Uh, there aren't as many businesses there as there used to be where people come out of work or people come out of church and go to um, the bakery to buy things. There's, there's not a lot of patrons stopping in to pick them up anymore, which tells me people don't feel safe where she's located. For the city to be successful, you need the resources to be spent in the city that the suburban individuals hold. They have to feel comfortable and safe going into the city of Reading to spend time. Until that changes, until that perception of safety changes, Reading is going to continue to struggle. It's the number one issue that has to be addressed. I used to love Reading. I still do in a sense, you know? It's where you were brought up and, you know, you just can't give that away, but things have changed dramatically. And I feel the purpose a lot of people don't want to come into the Reading, uh, to the Reading area no more is because of, you know, the way things have changed. The neighborhood's b basically the same. I many, much hasn't changed. I mean, your older people are, of course, are passing on, but, you know, it's still a good neighborhood as far as that goes, but. But what st the city of Reading still represents is opportunity. If you look at the population that is coming here, there are individuals who are looking for a chance, looking for an opportunity. I think that's what we need to harness moving forward. So 
I think public tastes have changed a lot since um, they started making the, those pretzels. They're a very dense pretzel, very heavy pretzel, and now you've got um, flavored pretzels. You have a variety of choices today where she's making a wonderful, dense pretzel. If it ain't broke, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. You know, that type of deal. I agree that there should be some changes, but what it is yet, I'm not sure. You know, one of the things that, that uh, Ms. Calder has to think about is marketing in a different way. You know, the older generation was your word of mouth, and as time was going on, they were passing on, and then the word wasn't out there as much as it used to be. So without Joe advertising like, you know, he should have been, he just left well enough alone. And because due to his age, I never wanted to disrespect. I always just ran it the way that he wanted it ran. Everybody wants to change everything about the place where if you start doing that, you don't have the product no more. I, I don't know why uh, Shelly continues, except that, as she's told me before, she's not a factory type person, she's not an office type person. Do I feel like I would be comfortable anywhere else? No. Could I make more money? Absolutely. I don't know, I'm just stuck in the moment. I enjoy what I do. You say people give 100%, I think she gives 150. It's, I can say that honestly. She, she does a lot, does a lot here to keep the place going. I know that. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of work for one person. You ever go on vacation? No, one, I did two times in 37 years. Well, three times. Yeah, I, I gotta ask why. Like what? I feel guilty. <laughs> No, what I do, I do, honestly, the first time I ever took a vacation, I felt guilty doing it. I, I felt out of place. I don't know why. She I'm the really one... She enjoy herself because she's so used to being at work. <laughs> so used to being here that if she's not here, it's, it's like she's lost. It's like a lost puppy. You don't like to relax. Yeah. She can't, ever. I don't. <laughs> Ain't. No. Don't I always have she's someone's kids going, or something? Always. There's always kids at her house. She's she's always doing something. <laughs> and she got that house, she got to maintain everything, <laughs> take care of the kids, cook, clean. Told you, it's... my day don't end, hun. So I don't take many vacations. I know I deserve them, but I don't know. I'm just comfortable here. This is my zone. I don't know why. Explain how important the volunteers are to you right now. Words can't explain it because these people step up in moments in their life that you don't expect and then they're, they're just there. So to express what I really feel like won't be enough. So, I mean, I appreciate everything everybody has ever done and I know they know it or they probably won't even be there, but I'm not one to ask for anything. So when they do step up, it's, it's all real. Everyone comes in here, they don't want to see this place closed, so the more help she has to keep it open, I am so willing and we just do it because we love to do it. We don't ask for anything or nothing like that. We just come in, help her, because she needs it. She's in here all by herself, so we're here to help her. She does have some competition. Uh, with some other pretzel manufacturers that are in the area, including Wawa, right? They bake their own pretzels too. They don't taste like Shelly's. Nothing tastes like those, those pretzels. They're the best in the world. It's a little hole in the wall if you, unless you know where it's at. If people knew where it was at and tried it, I think a lot more people would realize it's a better pretzel than they probably ever had. I've been eating these since, I'd say 55 years. I used to get these at this corner store when I went to West Reading to the high school. And uh, somebody used to deliver them in the morning, and you know we could pick them up. I think we paid, we got three of them for a quarter, I think, back then. But been eating them ever since. This was as, as much her story of one person in Reading trying to continue what she likes to do, 
at all cost. You know, I just got to keep on going. Because really, I'm doing what I love. And that's all that I feel good about at the end of that day. You know, I did the best that I could have done for that day. No money man is going to carry us. No corporate hand is going to bury us. We had convictions we'd be dangerous. Don't want the creed to guide our consequence. Don't want the shadows casting darkness on our future tense. They'd make a killing, but we're making sense.